there's only one problem. There's very little scientific evidence that it works. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times companies ripped us off and faced justice. What has happened for 14 years at Loblaw was illegal. For this list, we'll be looking at companies that misled the public about their products or practices and faced several legal and financial consequences as a result. Were you personally affected by any of these stories? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10, Visa and MasterCard. 2018 was a bad year for credit card giants Visa and MasterCard. For many years, the companies had allegedly fixed the swipe fees that merchants must pay whenever customers use a credit card. There is no law on the books that can stop a business from passing those fees on to you, but they must tell you about it up front. Even worse, they dissuaded these retailers from accepting other forms of payment, meaning they were trapped and unable to avoid the fixed fees. Millions of retailers launched a lawsuit against the credit behemoths, arguing that this violated trade laws. Turns out they were correct. In September of 2018, Visa, MasterCard, and several banks were ordered to pay over $6 billion in restitution. Number 9. Danon. Danon Yogurt. Made with only natural ingredients, only good gets in. As Danon learned in 2010, you can't just say whatever you want in regard to food products and expect the public to eat it up. Uh, no pun intended. This French company released two yogurts in the mid-2000s called Dan Active and Activia. She can't have already eaten it. These were sold at a premium, as they allegedly contained ingredients that helped boost the immune system and aid in digestion. Well, this was a load of nonsense, as these ingredients never passed clinical tests. Activia. Feeling good starts from within. So not only did the yogurt not do anything, but this regular, everyday product was falsely sold at a 30% markup. Activia, great people, great product! Danon was hit with deceptive advertising charges and ordered to pay $45 million in damages. Number 8. Airborne. Take Airborne, baby! Dietary supplements and grifters often go hand in hand. Created in the early 90s, Airborne is a company that produces both dietary and vitamin supplements. The only problem is that none of these supplements have ever been proven to cure anything. The idea of boosting your immunity is enticing, but it's proved elusive for an important reason. The immune system is precisely that, a system, not a single entity. The supposed benefits of the products are not backed by sound scientific research, and as a result, the company was hit with a major class action lawsuit. The Federal Trade Commission argued that Airborne was knowingly deceiving the public with false and unproven claims. One of the most egregious was that Airborne products could cure the common cold. A unique blend of vitamins and nutrients designed to help support your immune system. Perfect for this hectic back-to-school season. The company faced serious charges by the FTC and agreed to pay $30 million to settle the lawsuit. Number 7. Loblaws You know the system is rigged when bread becomes the subject of a lawsuit. In the late 2010s, it was discovered that numerous retailers were grossly inflating the price of bread in Canada. Since 2001, the companies allegedly agreed to raise prices at least 15 times, and each time, about 10 cents was added to each loaf. Consumers were paying 10% more than they should have been, resulting in false profits of up to $5 billion. The situation was brought to the Competition Bureau of Canada by informants working at Loblaw Companies, a retailer that owns various supermarkets. At least seven other companies are also under investigation by the Competition Bureau, including Canada Bread, Walmart Canada, Sobeys, and Giant Tiger. Their reputation was destroyed, so they offered Canadians a $25 gift card that could be used inside their stores, a PR move that would cost about $150 million. Loblaws is handing out the cards as a way to say sorry for fixing the price of bread between 2002 and 2015. In January of 2022, a Canadian judge gave the go-ahead for a massive class action lawsuit that is seeking billions in damages. Number 6. Takeda Pharmaceutical Company Once again, we turn to companies taking advantage of health issues and our desperate need to be rid of them. Takeda is the biggest pharmaceutical company in Asia, and they produce the drug Actos, which is meant to treat type 2 diabetes. The medication itself is called pioglitazone, and it is known to cause bladder cancer in those who ingest it. However, Takeda knowingly withheld this information from its clients, resulting in a class action lawsuit involving thousands of people. Takeda was found responsible for the dangerous deception and ordered to pay nearly $2.4 billion in restitution. Number 5. Facebook You are playing with an entire country, the psychology of an entire country, without their consent or awareness. We could write a book, a Facebook if you will, about this company and its many controversies. The privacy of its users has long been a contentious subject, and it got the company in a lot of trouble in the late 2010s. A British consulting firm called Cambridge Analytica was conspiring with Facebook to collect the personal data of millions of its users without their knowledge or consent. 
The problem was the company was not authorized to have this data, which they got through a Facebook app. This did not help with privacy concerns. This data was then used in the 2016 presidential election. They say it was their data and their research that gave President Trump the winning margin. As a result of the massive privacy violation, Facebook was fined $5 billion, and Mark Zuckerberg was forced to testify in front of Congress. The fallout also affected Cambridge Analytica as they soon filed for bankruptcy. Number four, Enron. There's one thing that I hope we can achieve. It is to uh, create an environment where, where our employees can come in here and realize their potential. It's a wild ride. <laughs> Few companies define the late 90s and early 2000s quite like Enron. Repeatedly named America's most innovative company by fortune, it was generating billions of dollars through commodities like electricity and gas. That's our vision. Uh, we're trying to change the world. Where were they? Shareholders were duped by the company's supposed worth as they were hiding billions of dollars in debt and ordering that their accounting firm, Arthur Anderson, look the other way. Deal, I don't understand how upper management would allow. It's because Enron actually used the same estimates in their earning reports, which magically transformed themselves into revenue, which translates directly into higher stock prices for investors. And higher bonuses and stock option payouts for execs. Everybody wins. Enron's stock price was at $90 in mid-2000, but once the deception was leaked, it plummeted to less than $1. Enron was slammed with a $40 billion lawsuit and filed for bankruptcy. Executives were also sent to prison, and Arthur Anderson was dissolved owing to their complicity in the scandal. Like most things that end terribly, it didn't start out that way. It started with a lot of people who thought they were changing the world. And over time, they became victims of their own hubris, victims of their own greed. And so it's like taking so much promise and possibility and looking at it in a mirror and seeing the flip side reflected back at you. Number three, Purdue Pharma. I'm profoundly sorry. I am deeply and profoundly sorry. There are few names as controversial as Purdue Pharma. Founded back in 1892 by John Purdue Gray and George Frederick Bingham, Purdue has long been accused of fostering the American opioid epidemic and manipulating it for profit. Their biggest controversy revolves around the drug OxyContin, which is the brand name for the highly addictive oxycodone. Purdue knowingly misled the public about the addictive nature of OxyContin and falsely claimed that it was safer than it is. Since 1998, doctors have observed patients developing addiction. Yet in this internal memo, the laboratory keeps on encouraging its representatives to sell at all costs their miracle pill, using bonuses, premiums, and all sorts of gadgets. In 2007, the company paid a historic $600 million in damages owing to the intentional manipulation. Purdue has since filed for bankruptcy protection and paid a further $8 billion in settlements. The company's agreed to an $8 billion settlement. However, it's likely only to pay a fraction of that amidst bankruptcy proceedings. Number two, Theranos. I worked for Steve Jobs. I saw some crazy things, but Elizabeth took it to a level that I've never seen before. You know the golden rule. If something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Founded in 2003 by Elizabeth Holmes, Theranos was a health tech company that claimed to revolutionize the science of blood testing. She was named one of Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People. Wired called her work mind-blowing. Investors pumped millions of dollars into this technology, resulting in an astounding company valuation of $10 billion in 2014. And those powerful men could influence people in the government, influence the Department of Defense. But just the very next year, Theranos was officially investigated and found to be duping its investors. The company's tech did not do what it claimed to do, and it was challenged by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. Because at the end of the day, I, I wouldn't run them on myself. I wouldn't run them on my family members. And it just didn't make sense that internally we had so little faith in these tests, but we're still resulting them on patients. Theranos was dissolved, and Elizabeth Holmes was convicted of fraud, resulting in a prison sentence of 11 years. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Bernard L. Madoff Investment Securities. There's one big name in Wall Street deception and that's Bernie Madoff. Madoff was well respected in the financial industry and even served as chairman of the NASDAQ exchange. But he was also a criminal running the biggest Ponzi scheme in history. Prosecutors claim that he lost some investors' money on bad trades. Then he tried to hide it all by replacing some of that with cash from new investors who were coming in. Apparently, the scheme unraveled last week. 
when clients asked for about $7 billion in redemptions and Madoff couldn't cover the requests. Through his investment securities firm, Madoff stole over $60 billion from investors and directly implicated various family members. Madoff was undone by his own sons, Mark and Andrew, who betrayed their father and served as whistleblowers against his company. We were, we were talking about whether or not uh, we think was, was Bernie sane? Was he telling us the truth? Was he making this up? And Mark and I were both clear that uh, he seemed to be clear-headed and, uh, and this, was, um, this was real. Madoff was sentenced to 150 years in prison and his brother Peter received 10 years. Exactly two years after Madoff's arrest, his son Mark took his own life. I asked him if he was depressed and he said, yes, but the fact that I am functioning troubles me a great deal. You can't do what I've done without guilt. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.